I've recently rewatched the Dark Souls 3 review from Joseph Anderson, where he said this. This isn't a good fight for beginners in my opinion because this version also thrashes around in a way that doesn't make sense like a standard enemy does. Veterans are going to plow through this thing first try, so this is mostly here as a welcome back to those players and a learning experience for those who are new. And yeah, I can't say that it's successful, I think another boss could have worked better, or hell, the standard version of Gundyr who doesn't attack as quickly. Basically, I couldn't really disagree more. Let's look at some other Souls games, for example. Bloodborne and Sekiro, for example, put you up against a foe that is literally unbeatable. Like, your first time through, when you beat Genichiro, my respect, you're a better player than me. I couldn't do it. I couldn't beat that wolf in Bloodborne. I also couldn't beat that demon in Demon Souls. I couldn't beat the uh, demon in Dark Souls 1 on my first try. It's a mess, okay? It's it's a hot mess, I, I think. It's really cool. It's basically the game going, okay, this is an unfairly hard challenge, and you probably fail a lot. And it's it's kind of great, because it sets the stage, you know? This is an unforgiving, hard world, and you'll die a, a lot. And this is exactly what Dark Souls 3 did for me, right? It, it put me up against this massive challenge, and it just you just had, had zero, zero chance. The difference here being is that in the other games, you would then, after you've, you know, obviously failed to the impossible task, be sent to a different challenge, you know, something else in the game to do, or you'd be made much stronger so that you'd actually be able to deal with the threat. Not so in Dark Souls 3. In Dark Souls 3, this thing does not go away unless you beat it, and it's really difficult to beat when you don't know how the game works, so this is one of the hardest fucking video game bosses, at least it, it, it was for me, because I just kept dying over and over and over again, and this fucking thing took me so, so long to beat. Oh yeah, wait, did I mention that he transforms into this in the second form? And it's not like the game goes, okay, now you died, it's fine, it'll be safe. No, you have to overcome this by yourself. And it's for exactly that reason why I love him so much. He makes zero sense as a first boss. He's kind of like Father Gascoigne. He just he does not make any there's there's no reason to put him here. This was an asshole move, a completely dickish decision by its creator to fuck with players. And it's just I don't know. Maybe I'm a masochist. Maybe I just enjoy being fucked, but I I love this. Because after I've I defeated it, I, I felt like I could take on anything. And that everything in the game was truly surmountable, that I could learn every single boss, deal with every single situation, as long as I was patient and, you know, as long as I gave it a shot. It didn't matter how long it take because I would improve as a player. The game wouldn't need to step in and take my hand, and to me that's just so, so awesome. Which is why I love Ludex Gandhi as a first boss. He's difficult, but he's doable. And yeah, it's, it's, it's great, really. Dark Souls 3 was my original first Souls game, and this boss fight just embodied everything that makes me love the series to this day. He's just so, so fun, because now I can beat him with my eyes closed, he's so, so terribly easy. I, I can easily take, I can take so much damage from him, it doesn't even, it doesn't even matter because I've just, I've must the game, there's nothing that it can do to stop me now, and it's, it's exactly that growth that's just so satisfying, man. And an Elden Ring like, oh yeah, there's this grafted scion. Um, absolutely zero chance of beating him. Uh, Sekiro kind of had this in the second playthrough. Genichiro will be actually doable in the beginning, but still, you can't. You're not supposed to beat him on this on your first playthrough. 